About 20 years ago, probably before most of you guys were born, this is how we usually ate. Uh, we sat around the table, we did family meal. You guys are a great group, so I'm, I'm expecting a positive answer here. But how many people have you, have you had, how many of you have had family dinner with your family, had a chat in the past week? Actually, only about half of you. How many of you have eaten in the car the past week? Also about half of you. So you guys are as good as it gets, so we're in a... Uh, this is what the problem I'm going to talk about, because this is what we've become. As a nation, food is not food, food is fuel. And the results are disastrous. One in seven kids go to uh, kindergarten obese. One in three of you guys will graduate high school with diabetes. Obesity is the epidemic of our day. I'm guessing you, don't, you guys don't see a lot of it because you're in Denver, but frankly, Denver is one of the major hotspots in the country, and I'll explain in a minute. How did we get here? Probably around when most of you guys were born, 1995, we were doing pretty well. Almost no state was over 20% obese. You can look at the slide, and the only state was Indiana. It was in pink, and it was the only state with over 20% obesity. Fast forward to uh, 1998, and over 10 states now obese, uh, now tw over 20% obese. We go to 2000, and you can just start seeing how quickly the world in the United States has changed. By, 2000, <clears throat> by 2002, we start seeing over 30% obese. By 2004, uh, where are we here? You can see it getting better, 2006, getting worse, I mean. Um, by 2008, Colorado was the only state under 20% obese. The rest of the country over 30% obese. Don't be proud, by now we've actually broken 20, 20, we're now at 22% in Colorado. The rest of the country, on average, 46% obese. We are a nation of a very large and unhealthy people. Now, why is it your problem? You guys are off to the races. You're going to do some fun stuff. You're going to build great things, whatever you do. Well, it's your problem because it cost us $450 billion in 2010. That's four times the annual cost of the Iraq war. That's three times the annual cost of universal health care. How many of you guys want universal health care? All right. We're not going to get it because we're spending our money on this, and it's getting much, much worse. By 2018, when it is truly your problem, it will have expected to double. Childhood obesity went from 5% in 1974 to 17% in 2008. Colorado, our wonderful state. Come on, our wonderful state. It's a great state. I love my state. We're not doing well either. We're about middle of the pack, 23rd in the country, 14% obese, in our childhood obesity. So what are we going to do about it? Well, there's one thing that I've found that every single one of you guys can do to make a difference. It's a very simple thing, and it's called the school garden. When you put a school garden in an elementary school or a middle school or a high school, you can double, you will double, the intake of the fruits and vegetables of the children in that school from two and a half portions a day to five portions a day. As an added bonus, test scores, when you teach kids in the garden how to do science, history, math, literacy, whatever you choose, you can increase scores by over 15 points on a 100-point scale. It's a no-brainer, and it's super easy for you guys to do. And so, why am I here? Why am I talking about it? Well, I actually saw this problem. I've been watching it for about eight years now and helping, helping it in different ways. And about two years ago, I decided to form a nonprofit that would help people like you put gardens in your schools, whether it's your own school, whether it's the middle school you just left, or the elementary school that your younger, uh, your younger brother or sister are going to, uh, or you just want to help out. So I created a, a nonprofit called The Kitchen Community. 
And what we do is we help put learning gardens in schools around the country to fight childhood obesity and to improve test scores. They're very different to traditional gardens. Traditionally, gardens and what we've actually worked with and supported uh, are rectangles. They're in the corner of the schoolyard and usually have a fence around them. Uh, children are not invited in. They're very hard to teach in. And also, they're kind of seen as this thing that will fall apart in a few years and people forget about it. So we really went out to change that perspective and we created the Learning Garden. The Learning Garden is a place where kids will want to play. It's designed to have no fence around it. It's designed to make teachers want to teach in it. They may want to teach science and really make a difference in their test scores, or they may just want to read a book and be outside. And that connection to nature, which our children have lost, we need to get them back, and this is one way to do it. And then the other thing that it is, it's not a temporary structure. It's something that is built into the school ground. It's part of the playground. The fact that it's an extension of the playground is essential to, the, to allow kids to enjoy it, to teach us to enjoy it whenever they want, to enable the community to enjoy it afterwards, to really get those kids connected back to real food. A couple of innovations we've built is our, school, our beds will fit in any schoolyard. So if you've got a school that has a rooftop, or you have a school that only has a parking lot, or you've got a school that has toxic soil, which many of the schools unfortunately do, our, our garden beds are modular. They're like Lego blocks. You can move them around, design them as you see fit, and you can have a lot of fun with it, create a maze-like organic structure uh, very easily, and it can sit on any environment. The other great thing about it is these are super easy to install. We know you, I know you want to make a difference, but I also know you don't have all the time in the world. And so I wanted to come up with something that was very easy for you to take to your school tomorrow and have it done by Monday. And these garden environments can be put together extremely quickly with, with a handful of volunteers, and you can do it tomorrow. We also create art elements for the kids, giving the kids ownership so they feel like they're part of it. So while you might go put it in your younger sister's elementary school, you want your younger sister to participate in it, planting vegetables, but also painting and enjoying, uh, adding some art to it to really make it feel like it's theirs. We've had a lot of support in Colorado. Governor Hickenlooper is awesome, and he has been a great supporter of what we do and what other nonprofits in the garden environment have done in the Colorado area. And really across the country, there's been an enormous amount of support. So there will be a lot of help for you if you go out and do this. And the other thing we do is also help on the funding. So if you have a school that you would like to put a garden in, and I would like every single one of you to do it, uh, we actually help, the fu help fund it. So we look at the, the low-income nature, of the, the underserved nature of the school, and we can, we can create a measure of how much we will subsidize the cost of the garden for you. And we, the goal is that any school can have it, whether you're ex an extremely underserved uh, community in a food desert, or if you're downtown, we want every single school to have a learning garden. So send me an email. I get this email, and I would love you all to send it to me and say, I'd like a garden in my school. Thank you very much.